What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And again, it's mock draft season, baby. I am so hyped for the upcoming 2024 NFL Draft today. Alex and I are hitting you guys with our own mock drafts that we put together with the Pro Football Focus Mock Draft Simulator. Now, fair warning, the PFF Mock Draft Simulator is a little bit funny. Sometimes players fall really far, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Sometimes other players get picked way too early, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But we were playing how the board fell to us on these mock draft simulators, and we took two very different approaches. One of us going in a very quarterback-heavy approach, and the other one addressing the defense. So we're going to kind of take a look at this and, and project what the Giants could do in this upcoming NFL draft, depending on how the board falls, go through picks uh, 6 to 70, all four of the Giants' top 100 picks in the first three rounds. It's pretty incredible that the Giants have four picks in the top 100 this year. Gives them a whole lot of valuable draft capital. And we're going to take a look at some of the positions that the Giants could potentially address with these picks in the upcoming 2024 NFL Draft. But before we dive into all that, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Comment your thoughts on the topics down below in the comment section. If you're listening to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. And go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. Without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And first and foremost, Pick number six in the NFL draft. You and I are going two different directions on these mock drafts. I'll start out with mine. At pick number six, I had Washington wide receiver Rome Odunze. Now, on the simulator for me, all three of the top quarterbacks were off the board. Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. off the board. So I said, okay, I still want to go wide receiver. I want to go playmaker. I could have went Brock Bowers, but I really like Romo Dunze. Big body wide receiver, great at contested catches, but also has a lot of speed and pretty refined route running for a player of his size. Had an excellent season for Washington. I go Romo Dunze at number six. What is your reaction to that? And then what did you have for the Giants at number six? Well, you know, I guess Rono Dunze is probably as good as any receiver in this draft class. He could end up becoming the best. Um, obviously, hard to compete with neighbors, hard to compete with Marvis and Harrison Jr., but Dunze is just as talented. He is might be the best route runner in this draft class. As you said, really good contesting catcher. Look, the Giants haven't had a true WR1 in such a long time. We haven't really had that impact player, the guy you can throw it to on third down and know he's coming down with the rock. Wandale Robinson is kind of transforming into our most reliable pass catcher at this time on third downs we've just been feeding him the ball so I feel like we could use another star receiver and I know that if we in the sixth overall pick if we don't end up with a quarterback and I go with a different uh position than you but Romo Dinze is it could be as good as anybody and I do think that ultimately I'd love that pick you know you, you can't have enough playmakers you can't have enough blue chip talents um I have my preferences of course but I think Odunze you know that would be a home run pick for the Giants along with if they go neighbors or Brock Bowers even obviously he's a stud we love him too uh, but the wide receiver position, man, it's hard to find those top tier guys. And Odunze is going to make an impact on day one. And if the Giants want to give Daniel Jones that, that extra chance, give him the chance to fight his way back in 2024, he's going to need that top receiver. The Giants are going to have to give him the weapons necessary to bounce back and show what he can do. Um, so I do believe that, yes, it, it makes a ton of sense for the Giants if they do stick and pick at six. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think playmaker, if you can get a blue chip playmaker early in the draft, especially in this draft class where there are so many talented playmakers, this is the year to take advantage, right? Capitalize on that opportunity. You don't think you're going to be picking in the top six next year. At least you hope not if you're the New York Giants. So you're not going to have too many opportunities going forward to get a top playmaker like this. And so, of course, regular viewers regular listeners know I want the New York Giants to go quarterback but on this simulator there was no good quarterback available on the board so Romo Dunze a player that I really like that I think could be the WR1 that the Giants have been searching for ever since Odell Beckham Jr. left they haven't had a thousand yard receiver since 2018 when OBJ was on the team he gets traded to Cleveland and ever since we've been talking about guys like Golden Tate Kenny Galladay and Darius Slayton as our WR1s and no disrespect to uh, two of those three guys, Kenny Galladay, we disrespect because he was just terrible for us, but Golden Tate and Darius Slayton were good receivers for us. Uh, Slayton still is, but not WR1 caliber. Romo Dunze has that potential to, to step in and be WR1 caliber as a rookie, maybe even put up a thousand receiving yards as a rookie, and that would transform this offense in a way that 
hasn't happened really since maybe Saquon Barkley showed up in 2018. So Romo Dunze, instant upgrade, although it does leave a big question mark still at the quarterback position. Maybe the Giants sign somebody at free agency. Maybe they just feel confident in Daniel Jones and they give him Romo Dunze. It's totally possible. It's just a projection. But I know, Alex, you had something different on your mock draft simulator. Quarterbacks didn't go off the board one, two, three, and one fell right into your lap. One that I know you've been dying to talk about on this channel for a long time. Let's go ahead and hear who you had at the number six overall pick. If a long time is 24 hours, then absolutely it's been ages <laughs> for me. Um, yes, uh, six overall, I'm going the Daniel Jeremiah train. I'm going Jaden Daniels. For some reason, PFF has him dropping based on their parameters. And look, realistically, guys, I think we're probably looking at a trade-up scenario, but it's hard to predict, project the trades depending on what the Patriots end up doing. Um, if they do want to move back, you're probably going to have to trade up and give them a first-round pick. And look, guys, I am 100% giving the Patriots a 2025 first-round pick if it takes that to move up to get Jaden Daniels because we're going to open up substantial salary space by releasing Daniel Jones after 2024. You can basically offset that first round pick with $30 million in additional cap space. So that's my logic behind that. And guys, that first rushing touchdown from Jaden Daniels in week one is going to hit like Heisenberg blue crystal, my friends. It's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be so nice. Uh, man, he, look, you, you don't find players with that type of dual threat all that often. The best deep ball, one of the best deep balls I've ever seen. Uh, some really good tangible skill sets, and the guy's a leader. And you know what? Why do the Giants love Daniel Jones so much? The guy comes in and works. The guy says all the right things. He stays off social media. He does all the right stuff. Jaden Daniels is a carbon copy of that mold. He shows up first. He leaves last. He doesn't say any dumb things to the media. He's a humble, quiet guy on, um, outside of the field. That's the type of person the Giants love. And, and look, ultimately, I think he fits the mold perfectly. He fits our offense perfectly. He can run the football. He can escape the pocket. He has so much room to grow. Yes, he's a little bit older. I'm willing to take that gamble because of his skill set and upside. And he's really put it all together. And guys, if you look at his tape and you say to yourselves, oh, well, he only throws the ball deep. That's why he has so much production. Uh, I'll remind you, at Arizona State, he was once called a checkdown merchant. So, you know, you see him, checkdown merchant at Arizona State. He goes to LSU, and they tell him, keep your eyes up, throw the ball downfield, buddy. You know what he does? Throws the ball downfield, has the best deep passing grade in football, um, in college football this past season. Look, he had a great supporting cast. He had some really good receivers, a really good offensive line, and we're just hoping the Giants can at least give him a semblance of that. Um, the arm talent is there. The speed is there. The elusiveness, the leadership the work ethic. I think that everything you want in a quarterback is comprised um, in, in of Jaden Daniels' skill set. And ultimately, the Giants need to reset that quarterback window. We need the salary space. We need a guy with elite upside right now in a strong quarterback class. You take this guy. Even if it means trading up and giving up a first-round pick, I am down to do it. Um, you have to take this guy at six if he somehow falls for by the graces of the gods. Um, that's what it would take, a, a miracle for him to drop the six to us. If it did happen, though, you know I'd be running to the podium. Yeah, and I'll say I don't think it's so far out of the realm of possibility that a quarterback is on the board for the Giants at six, whether that be Jaden Daniels or Drake May. We still have the combine coming up here. Everything always gets kind of haywire at the combine. Sometimes you have teams not like their interviews with a certain quarterback or think maybe he could have tested better in this area and then all of a sudden he falls like three spots. It happens, you know. It's We're here in February and everybody's like, no way the quarterbacks don't go one, two, three. But we've been here before saying no way quarterbacks don't go one, two, three, and they haven't gone one, two, three, right? So I'm not ruling out the possibility of either Drake May or Jaden Daniels falling to the Giants at number six. Maybe it's not the most realistic scenario, but again, the real exercise here with these mock drafts is to pinpoint positions of need and where the Giants should draft them. And I can't disagree with you that in the first round, the New York Giants, whether it be taking Jaden Daniels if he falls in their lap at six or trading up to go get him, they should be targeting a quarterback in the first round. And you know I love Jaden Daniels. I think that his playing style is very similar to Tyrod Taylor's, but better, more dynamic. And Tyrod Taylor, his playing style really looked solid in this Brian Dable offense this past season. Uh, similar concerns for both of those players, though. Tyrod Taylor gets hurt quite a bit, takes a lot of unnecessary hits. Jaden Daniels, skinny, also takes a lot of unnecessary hits, needs to be coached in that regard to make sure that he holds up at the NFL level. But if he does, you mentioned that one of the best deep passers in college football this past season, arguably the best. He's got elite athleticism. He has all the tools and traits that Brian Dable will salivate over when we get to draft season. And I salivate for it too. Give me Jaden Daniels. Major pause. But I think that he would be a great pick with the number six overall pick. Let's move on to the second round though. Alex, this is actually 
the one rounds where we target the same position here with the number 39 overall pick. Both going edge rusher, two different edge rushers though. I'm going Chop Robinson out of Penn State. Now I know that there are some who feel like he could be a back end of the first round player. However, it's really going to depend on how he performs at the combine, I think, and there's a great chance that he's there for the Giants at number 39 overall. Now, Chop Robinson, what I like about him, his pure speed off the edge. This isn't a run defending pass rusher. This is a straight pass rusher. Like this is your edge rusher that you want opposite of Kayvon to just get after the quarterback, apply pressure to the quarterback, move that quarterback into Kayvon Thibodeau's rushing lane and hopefully help Kayvon Thibodeau get more sacks and vice versa. They need more depth on this edge. Yes, they have Thibodeau. Yes, they have Ojolari. And maybe they address it in free agency and they don't need to go out there and get an edge rusher in round two. That's totally possible. Wrote an article this morning about how ESPN had uh, Bryce Huff best fit for the New York Giants this offseason. Maybe they go into free agency and they take a pass rusher. But if they don't, and maybe even if they do, there are good pass rushers in the second round of this year's draft. Again, uh, Chop Robinson out of Penn State, just a player with freakish athleticism, a whole lot of speed off the edge. Maybe wasn't super productive in college. I think he had like four sacks this past season, maybe seven the year prior. So not a ton of production at the collegiate level. But that's not really what you look for in pass rushers um, when you're scouting them, or at least NFL teams don't. They look for tools and traits. And I think that Chop Robinson, his quick first step, his ability to bend around the edge and get after the quarterback and apply a lot of pressure, those are the tools and the traits that an NFL team is going to really fall in love with. So Chop Robinson at number 32, I think he'd be an exciting pick. This is more of that speed rusher, get after the quarterback pick. But Alex, I know with your edge rusher, you kind of went for a different flavor of edge rusher, kind of a different style and approach to the game with your edge rusher at 39. Yeah, I did. And you want to know something. He had a pretty good game against Jaden Daniels um, in LSU, kind of beat up on the LSU offensive line for Missouri this past season. Darius Robinson. Um, look, I think this is a good player for a couple of reasons. One, dominated the Senior Bowl. Two, this is a 100% max effort player. Um, I love guys that don't give up. I love guys that are all going 100%, 100% every single play. The reason why I love Brock Bowers, by the way. So Darius Robinson... One thing that I will say about him that gets me um, excited about his future in the NFL is that he doesn't just come in as a pure pass rusher. He's a good run stopper. Um, he's got really good size, um, really good, pretty solid speed. I wouldn't say like it's great speed, but you know, solid enough speed to get by. But he's six foot five, two ninety six. The dude is a massive human being as an edge rusher, right? We're kind of probably going to play more of an outside linebacker system, but you know, a guy of this size, this stat, this stature, you put him next to Dexter Lawrence, and he dominates off of stunts. So, you know, like this is a really good player to have um, as a development upside type of person he can make an impact immediately as a run stopper really solid tools when it comes to pass rushing but um plenty of room to develop and i think that's something that i really like about him is that there's room to grow and you know had a couple of really good standout performances finished it with 42 tackles and nine sacks this past season 27 hurries um some really good performances um you know against lsu had four pressures and a sack like you know, a good player all, all together. And I think there's a lot of upside to grow, a lot of upside for improvement. And like you said, sometimes you're drafting for traits. Sometimes you're drafting for the ability to become a great player. Um, some people had some concerns about Darius Robinson uh, going into the senior bowl. And now you're going to go into the combine. I think he's going to impress some people. And he did a lot for that Missouri team. He went, he played all across that defensive front. He has experience in different alignments, doing different things. And to me, that's just added value to your draft stock. If you're able to play multiple spots, move around, um, at, do whatever they need you to do. You know, that's something that I like. And, you know, at, like I said before, having that initial trait of like good run stopper, it doesn't hurt because it helps make opposing offenses one dimensional. And that obviously takes out a, a good play, a good portion of the playbook. We've had a lot of issues with some of these young guys struggling against the run early. Kayvon Thibodeau's had inconsistencies against the run. Azizo Jalari has been so, so against the run. Having a guy with good pass rush upside and good against the run immediately, that stands out to me as someone I'd like for the Giants to uh, add to this defensive unit. Yeah, and a lot of the traits that you mentioned there I think make a lot of sense for Shane Bowen's defense in particular. You kind of mentioned that maybe this edge rusher, whoever they bring in this offseason, will play more of that outside linebacker role. Yes and no. I think that in the Shane Bowen multiple hybrid front defense, you're going to see these edge rushers play as outside linebackers and as defensive ends. So when you're looking at a guy like Darius Robinson, you mentioned his size, six foot five, 296. 
I mean, at that size, you can play interior defensive line and edge. So you could get up and be that stand-up linebacker. That size is comparable to a Jihad Ward, but it's also comparable to a Leonard Williams who played on the edge as a five tech with his hand in the dirt in the past. So yeah, I think that's a really good and intriguing pick. Definitely a plus run defender, a big sized edge rusher that can get down and dirty in the trenches and also get on the edge and get after the quarterback and a lot of tools and traits there that you're going to really like, especially in a Shane Bowen defense that moves those pass rushers around from the interior to the outside, moves them all over the place. So I think that's a really great pick. Again, a different flavor, different style than my pass rusher in Chop Robinson. That's more one of those guys where you just want him to go get after the quarterback. You don't expect him to make a big impact in the running game to start his career. Hopefully he develops into that role. But with the player that you had, Missouri's Darius Robinson, He's a player that you expect to actually make an impact early in the running game. So I like both of those selections, and I think maybe you even beat me on that one if we're making this a competition. But with my second pick in the second round, I'm again addressing the defense, which might be surprising. I know the Giants' offense was really bad, but I liked the value of Michigan defensive interior player Chris Jenkins. If you've ever watched this guy play bully baller on the interior and a shockingly good pass rusher, I'm salivating of the idea of Chris Jenkins paired alongside Dexter Lawrence. The interior pass rush for this team would be sick. This is your Leonard Williams replacement. This is the guy who lines up on the interior, moves to the outside, beats up on tackles, beats up on guards, on centers. Chris Jenkins can do all of that. Has a crazy amount of agility and quickness out of his stance for an interior defensive lineman. Arguably a little bit undersized, but really, I like him right where he's at because that gives him the versatility to move around on the defensive line and make an impact like that. So we've talked a lot about opening up rushing lanes for Kayvon Thibodeau by adding another edge rusher. You can open up some rush lanes for Kayvon Thibodeau by adding an interior defensive lineman as well and having two really solid players there. So with this projected mock draft that I have, you've got Chop Robinson, Chris Jenkins, you've got Dexter Lawrence, and Kayvon Thibodeau. That, if it develops properly with those young guys, could be one of the best front fours in all of football. Uh, if, if Chop Robinson, Chris Jenkins, and Kayvon Thibodeau pan out, we already know Dexter Lawrence, the best defensive lineman on the interior in the league this past season and arguably the season prior. So Chris Jenkins is my pick, Alex, but I know that this is another selection where you went in a different direction from me. So who did you have at number 47 and what are your thoughts on potentially taking an interior defender at number 47? Well, I'll tell you what, if there's anything the Giants have been good at drafting in the last decade, it's interior linemen. So, you know, if they see a guy like Chris Jenkins, who has a lot of upside, and by the way, they have one of the best uh, defensive line coaches in the game, and Andre Patterson, um, you draft someone like this, right? You draft the guy with high upside, someone that's going to make an instant impact as a run defender, but also going to help you as a pass rusher long term. Dexter Lawrence, by the way, was not very good pa at pass rushing when he first entered the league. Those were skill sets he developed over the course of two or three seasons. So if you see a guy like Chris Jenkins and you say, there's something there, you know, there, there's something to work with in terms of his pass rush qualities um, from that interior spot. You take a chance on that, right? He's about 300 pounds, 6'3". So he's a big dude, obviously. Um, and by the way, the fact that Darius Robinson's like 6'5 and 300 and looks like he's just made of pure muscle, also freakishly, uh, you know, big in that regard. But I do think that I wouldn't be opposed to this. Um, I go offense here because I wanted to add another weapon for Jaden Daniels in my system. So I don't think the Giants are going to spend big on a receiver this offseason. The crop of receivers in free agency isn't very good. So I wanted to give him at least another weapon alongside what we already have. Wandale, Jalen Hyatt, you know, maybe we, yeah, you know, I think Hodgins, we could bring him back. Um, and then maybe you, maybe you keep Waller in this instance. Uh, you don't, you don't release him if you go in the direction of a quarterback here. So who I end up taking is the other Washington receiver, Jalen Polk. I think Jalen Polk would be a nice fit for this team. This this Giants team, they're they're fast. You know, they can do a lot of stuff in the, in the open field, but man, they just don't have that guy with elite hands and great contested catch abilities. And Jalen Polk does support that narrative. Um, I do think this is a good option for them. He's 21 years old, 6'2", 204, good size, good frame. Not the fastest guy on earth, but he makes really, really good contested catches. Um, I think this is someone that the Giants could use in terms of expanding their versatility. Um, has experience playing in the slot, has experience playing out wide. Um, this past season, he ended up 58.7% of his snaps out wide and 41.1% in the slot. So, you know, had a pretty nice even split, versatile, use him around your different alignments, put him in motion. You can do a lot with him. Odunze got a lot of the work, but let's not forget 
Polk had 1,159 yards and nine touchdowns. He was no joke in that offense. He was a primary receiver, um, and he's been getting better year over year. Had 108 targets up from 68 in 2022. So he's been progressively getting better. A 5.5% drop rate, not bad at all. Um, you know, really, really solid guy. And obviously, you know, the 63.9% reception rate could stand to improve a bit. But again, that could be more so to go with, uh, you know, the, the where the ball was placed, you know, if the, th- if the throw was incomplete, like it doesn't always an indication of the of the receiver's inability to catch the football. So I do like this as an option for the Giants. I wanted to address receiver, give Jaden Daniels another weapon. But I don't stop there with a third pick either, with a third round pick either. So I'll let you get your your next one in there. Uh, but I do think that this is definitely an option for the Giants where we're able to invest in the offense, right? Our defense, I think, will be okay. We have enough solid core pieces there, especially if we give a little money to a CB2 and bring back Xavier McKinney. The offense needs substantial support, and I want to make sure we address those positions with cost-controlled players for the foreseeable future. 100%. And before I give my pick for that third round, which I think is going to be a surprise for some people, I do want to give my take on Jalen Polk. I, I love Jalen Polk. I came away uh, from his film when I watched it earlier this month really surprised because I hadn't heard a whole lot of buzz about Jalen Polk. I, I don't think he's being talked about enough. This should be an early day two player to me. I mean, 51% career co- contested catch rate. That's incredible. It's among the best in this draft class. You mentioned it. Half of his snaps or, or, or uh, 40% of his snaps in the slot, 58% out wide. You can move him around your offense. He can be all over the place for you. Career job percentage of only 5.3%. That's really solid among the best in the class as well. And then this is my favorite stat that I found when diving into him. 48.9% of his yards came in his collegiate career on 20 plus yard receptions, but only 25.9% of his targets were 20 plus yard targets. So that means... Half of the time, he was gaining yardage on those deep plays, but only being targeted on those deep plays a quarter of the time. So that's that kind of tells you anytime you're targeting Jalen Polk on a deep shot or you're trying to get a big play out of him, he's usually going to connect and make it something pretty special. Now, he doesn't provide a whole lot of yards after the catch for this offense, but that's okay. They've got speedy guys like a Wandale Robinson, like a, a Jalen Hyde. I know he hasn't shown a whole lot after the catch just yet, but we know he's got the ability to with all that speed. But Jalen Polk, Excellent hands, ability to go up there and make those contested catches. The Giants need somebody with some size in their receiving core. I still find them to be a little bit undersized, but Polk, he can go up there and get it, and he can be a red zone threat for you, but he's also a pretty good route runner, so he can make plays at all three levels. Really like Jalen Polk. Thought that was a great pick by you, Alex. But moving on to pick number 70 in the third round, the final pick of the Giants' four top 100 selections. This is where I finally do have them addressing the quarterback position. Now, This is a little bit of a shocker. Obviously, you guys know I want to go quarterback in round one if I'm the New York Giants. But if I can't, I'd like to circle back around in round three and take South Carolina quarterback Spencer Rattler. Now, don't come at me with the pitchforks. I know he's a little bit of a controversial prospect. One point, people thought he could be a number one overall pick when he was with Oklahoma. But it didn't really pan out that way because you had Caleb Williams come in, steal his starting job. Then Spencer Rattler transferred and played for a South Carolina offense that was terrible. And that really didn't give him any support. But even still, when you watch Spencer Rattler play for South Carolina, you see a lot of determination, a lot of grit. You see somebody battling through severe adversity and turning in some solid performances. The stats aren't going to blow you away. I know that. You know, he didn't put up a bunch of touchdowns and he threw quite a few interceptions. However, look deeper into those stats. He was pressured 40% of his dropbacks. That's an insane number, especially at the collegiate level. So if you want to talk about a quarterback stepping into this New York Giants situation, because we've heard that quite a few times, right, Alex, where all these quarterbacks, Jaden Daniels didn't face a whole lot of pressure in college. How is he going to fare behind this terrible Giants offensive line? Maybe not too well to start. Spencer Rattler, It's just going to be another day in the park for him. I mean, when he was with South Carolina, he had a different starting offensive line configuration for 10 games this past season. Now, doesn't that sound like a team we know? That sounds like the New York Giants. They can never have a starting offensive line configuration last more than two weeks. And Spencer Rattler has dealt with that at the collegiate level. So I trust that he can handle things like that at the next level. Now, a little bit undersized, six foot, six foot one area, but he's built out. He's got a great arm. Very strong arm, can make a throw on any platform, and he's pretty accurate. It's a decision-making, can use some room for improvement, for sure. Sometimes he gets under all that intense pressure, throws up some prayers into double coverage, pretty ugly, interceptions. But also, I like the way that he plays in rhythm. He's done a lot of those 
rhythm passes, those timing passes. And there's just a lot to like about Spencer Rattler. There's a lot to dislike, don't get me wrong. And he is a polarizing prospect for many reasons. But realistically, when you're the New York Giants here, if you're picking there at, at, at number 70 in the third round and you haven't taken a quarterback yet, I do think you need somebody developmental out of this draft class if you're not getting somebody that you think is going to be a franchise guy in the first round. And Spencer Rattler, of all those middle round quarterbacks that are stuck in that pack, I think he has the best chance to develop into a starter. I don't think any team is going to draft Spencer Rattler expecting him to be a career backup. They're going to draft him expecting him to be a solid backup and hopefully develop into a starter. And that's kind of what the Giants need if they can't land a quarterback in the first round, in my opinion. So Spencer Rattler, again, polarizing prospect, controversial figure, but... You watch the way that he played for South Carolina this past season, had zero receiving help outside of Xavier Leggett. When you watch the uh, the South Carolina offense, half of their production was just Spencer Rattler under pressure. F it, I'm throwing it up to Xavier Leggett. Xavier Leggett is coming down with it. But then the other half of their production was really Spencer Rattler battling in the trenches, getting beat up, and making some good throws. So I like Rattler. I'm not saying he's QB1 or first-round prospect or anything, but in the third round, I am more than comfortable taking a flyer on him with the 70th overall pick. Maybe he goes a little bit earlier. Maybe I'd be fine with the Giants taking him a little bit earlier. I'm not so sure. Depends on who's on the board. But in this mock draft simulator, he was sitting there in the third round um, in this PFF mock draft. I didn't take a quarterback yet, so I'm going Spencer Rattler there. Yeah, look, if the Giants don't end up taking a quarterback in the first round, I do not think it's a bad idea to take a player like Spencer Rattler, who's gone through adversity, come out on the other side better, played in a bad system, showed some great throws. I mean, he's got legitimate arm talent. He's mobile. Um, he's got the traits. Like, if you want to, if people want to sit there and glaze J.J. McCarthy for what he's done and put and, and say he's a top 10 quarterback, having barely even shown any any of that actual tangible statistics on the on paper. Why can't you say the same thing about Spencer Rattler? You know, why can't you sit here and say, you can make an argument that Spencer Rattler's arm is better than J.J. McCarthy's. You can make an argument that, that Spencer Rattler produced in a system that was far worse than J.J. McCarthy's. One of the worst offensive lines in college football, um, among many other things. He's a, he's, a, he's a solid athlete at the quarterback position. He's gone through adversity. I don't think J.J. McCarthy's ever experienced losing before. Come to the New York Giants and find out when your offensive line's falling apart and we're losing five straight games. How are you going to deal with that adversity? He comes from a system and a, and a high school system uh, way back when where he was winning all the time. That does not mean he's going to win at the NFL level. I feel like that's a facade. People are people are like, oh, he knows how to win football games. I'm like, yo, like the Giants, like all, most of these guys coming from, from college football that are high-level players – um, are winners throughout their college careers. That does not mean they're going to be winners at the NFL level by any means. So if we're going to sit here and talk about J.J. McCarthy's uh, talents, his intangible, intangible traits, why can't we say the same thing about Spencer Rattler? Like, why are we just going to ignore his tangibles? So I feel like that's a fair argument personally. And if the Giants don't go out for don't get a Jaden Daniels in the first round or a Drake May, whoever you guys want, um, I feel as though taking one in the third round is a more than a fair gamble. You should always be willing to take a guy with, with legitimate traits and upside and you know let him sit behind daniel jones for a year you bring in another veteran and i i'd be fine with the giants if they were to go in this direction obviously i prefer the Jaden daniels direction or the drake may direction but if you end up you know keeping dj bringing in a legitimate veteran like a Gardner Minshew or there's a ton of other options and then drafting Spencer Rattler to be your QB three and just learn for a year, learn for two years and then take over after that um or at least give him a chance when the opportunity arises why not? You know, let's see how he grows. Let's see how he develops. Maybe for what it's worth, the Giants end up getting a veteran quarterback in the future or a, they draft someone next year and they have that guy compete outright with Spencer Rattler. You know what I mean? And like, and then you kind of, uh, you go from there. So, you know, not a bad pick. I support that in your, in the, in your mock draft scenario. I support that completely in mine. I'm going with a little bit of a different route. I want to give Jaden Daniel even more weaponry aside from Jalen Polk. I go with Tennessee running back Jalen Wright. Now probably going to be a little bit of an interesting uh, reaction from some. I know, uh, Anthony, you're not the biggest fan of a running back right now, but why do I like Jalen Wright? Well, let me list off the traits for you. He's 20 years old. He's the first thousand yard rusher for Tennessee since 2015 and models his game after Alvin Kamara. He's super freaking explosive. He has 4-3 a 40 yard dash speed, 99th percentile, home run hitting capabilities, um, yards after contact, First in the class, 7.4 yards per carry in 2023. And if you like Daniel Jeremiah, he calls him a startering ability running back. So, you know, I love speed, man. You know, if you're a linebacker and you're trying to cut an angle 
and he gets through that first that first level, he's gone. You're not gonna catch him. Like that's that's the great thing about a guy like Jalen Wright. If you get that angle on him wrong, you are lost. You're not gonna get him. So I do love that capacity um, to be able to explode. Like you guys love Saquon Barkley's game playing, like a game breaking ability. Jalen Polk has that, if not even faster than Saquon by a pretty considerable margin. Um, and also, he's not a guy that's going to slow down. He falls forward. He he absorbs contact. He goes right into contact full speed. He's not afraid to take a hit, and he's young. Not too many miles on him. Um, I do think this is a player that could have a very bright future in the NFL. And if the Giants are going to let Saquon Barkley go, they're going to need to give a rookie quarterback in this instance specifically a chance to develop alongside a good running back i think giving him more talent is objectively a good thing think about this you have a, a jalen polk on a rookie contract wandell on rookie contract jalen high at rookie contract you have jalen uh jalen Wright on a rookie contract Jaden daniels on a rookie contract and by if you're if you're interested in what receivers are available next year in free agency assuming that some of them actually hit the market go check out the names that are going to be there the giants will have substantial money to go and sign a top flight receiver to pair with their young crop of cost controlled talent on the offensive side that's how you rebuild an offense, my friends. That's how you set your, your franchise in the direction of we are good financially and we have young talent to develop and build around. So that's kind of the mentality I went with in this heavy offense, getting ourselves a pass rusher to compete alongside Aziz Ojolari and probably take that job from him, to be quite honest with you, and with Darius Robinson. He's that, he's that much upside and he's healthy too. So um, I know Jalen Wright might not be your preference, but I think that if we're going to let Saquon walk, I'd like to get a nice mid-round pick who can be a game-breaking type of back to give you some elite traits you know i love my elite traits in the mid rounds yeah and i'm not gonna lie i think you cooked here i think jalen wright makes a lot of sense for this new york giants team i just don't like a running back early in the third round is early to me just because i think there are more pressing needs and also this free agency class is kind of littered with running back talents i think there's a lot of players that you could sign very low cost contracts become quality starters for you in this free agency class. So that's why I'm kind of against the idea of a running back in the third round. However, I do really like Jalen Wright. You mentioned a lot of his traits. And one thing that you said that really stood out, he reminds you of Alvin Kamara and has received those comparisons. Giants new running backs coach, that's the one who just molded Alvin Kamara into the player that he is. Joel Thomas coming over from the New Orleans Saints. This is the type of player that he would love to get his hands on. And you know that the Giants are going to go into this draft and find prospects that fit the mold of their assistant coaches, what they like at those positions, and draft according to that. So Jalen Wright out of Tennessee makes a lot of sense, could pair up with Joel Thomas and hopefully become the New York Giants version of Alvin Kamara. Now, who knows, maybe the Giants do end up retaining Saquon Barkley. It's still early. It's possible. We've got a long time between now and free agency. And then, of course, the draft. But Jalen Wright, a solid pick there. But really, overall, some interesting mock drafts here. These weren't your traditional mock drafts, I would say. They weren't your dream scenario mock drafts. I wrote up a dream scenario mock draft earlier today on the website. Had the Giants landing both Jaden Daniels and Keon Coleman because he's now slipping into the second round. The dream scenarios are fun, but... These were more, I'd say, tame mock drafts, more realistic mock drafts, good value, but nothing game-breaking, but different approaches here. And I think this was a good way, good exercise to kind of highlight that the NFL draft is very unpredictable, you don't know what's going to happen, and you can take multiple routes to get to the same end result. Both of these drafts can be considered good drafts, but they both took very different approaches to attacking the draft board. And so I think that's kind of an interesting thing to highlight and take away from this um, and really prepare for this upcoming draft season because once this combine happens, we'll probably do another one of these kind of dueling mock drafts, take a look at the post-combine players, who's risen, who's fallen. It's possible that certain receivers are now first-round talents, that were third-round talents, and now they're third-round talents, and they were first-round talents. It's totally possible. So Things are about to really heat up and get interesting here uh, once this combine starts next week, and I can't wait for that. But Alex, any closing thoughts? Any any ideas on who won these dueling mock drafts? I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna concede here. I th I think you I think you took home the the trophy on this one. Well, I mean, anytime you get Jaden Daniels in there, I think it's an easy dub. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> um, ultimately, I do believe like both our drafts are are pretty solid. They address needs. Um, they add some high upside talent. They add talent to 
positions we desperately need support at. And the truth is simple. Like this team needs to get better. We need to hit on draft picks. We need to, you know, have cost controlled contracts. And um, I think obviously like going quarterback one gives us that luxury of saying we have our instantaneous starter. We can open up salary for the future. Spencer Rattler is a little bit more of a unknown. Um, Jaden Daniels is your quarterback. You don't draft him to sit. You draft him to start. And that's kind of like the difference here. Like if, if we were both going receivers one, I'd be like, yeah, like it's, it, it's probably a, a toss up. But just because of the quarterback being the most important position, you get a, a guy with elite upside as a prospect. Um, it's hard to argue. Like, it, you know, of course, anything could happen. The draft is a crapshoot. But I do love your picks. I do really like um, Christian Haynes is a guy I would love the Giants to get. You know, an off, like, offensive guard from the Huskies, like, really solid player. Like, I really think the Giants could benefit from some interior offensive line support. And I think Carmen Priscilla is a good developmental teacher. So I, I think that there's going to be a draft pick here. Um, just don't know when. It could be someone he's familiar with from the Senior Bowl. It could be someone he saw some traits and he wants to grow. The Giants have guys on their team they need to develop now. Like, they don't really need to draft an interior lineman because you got Evan Neal probably kicking in, Josh Azudu, Marcus McKethan, um, any free agents they want to bring. Like, it, they have guys now they can develop. It's not like they have to draft anybody. So that's kind of what I what I got, what it comes down to, like developing guys you've already taken, um, and then finding some guys who can make an instant impact as rookies in long term um, at positions of need. Definitely, and it's so hard to project who the Giants will draft, what positions they're going to address right now, because again, free agency hasn't even started yet. Uh, like you just mentioned, Christian Haynes could be a really interesting selection for the Giants in the second or third round. UConn offensive guard who stood out at the Senior Bowl. But what if the New York Giants go into free agency, sign um, Onwenu from the Patriots and another guard? I, you don't really need to address the offensive line in the draft if that's the case, at least not that early. So who knows, man? Maybe they go out and somehow land T Higgins. And then I'm not taking Romo Dunze with a six overall pick, right? So it's a crapshoot. It's all unpredictable. We'll see. But again, I think this was a, an important and fun exercise to kind of take a look at the different approaches that the Giants possibly could take in this upcoming draft, because there are an endless amount of possibilities. And I love the draft for that. The draft is a lot of fun. Draft season is going to be great. I can't wait for the NFL draft because Alex, I'm just thinking about when we do those live stream reactions. If the Giants end up trading up on draft day and selecting Jaden Daniels, your reaction is going to be priceless. And I can't wait to see that happen. Hopefully it does happen. But again, we have a long ways to go. And of course, we're going to keep knocking out all this NFL draft and NFL free agency content surrounding the New York Giants for you guys right here on Fireside Giants. So make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Comment your thoughts on the topics down below in the comment section. If you're listening to Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, we'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good one. And let's go Giants.